Hey developers, today I'm gonna to go over five tools that I use daily as a software developer. And I'd love to hear if you guys use any of these tools and which ones you guys like. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. But before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Hey developers, I just wanna thank our sponsor today, Eduonix, that's E-D-U-O-N-I-X dot com. They are a course platform. They're doing an amazing Black Friday sale. You can get courses over 50% off and some up to like 90% off. So let's take a look at some. If I click explore here, courses, software, web development, one of their premier courses, the full stack web development course, you can get it for as little as $5. And in fact, if you use the code Eric 20 at checkout, you can get an additional 20% off. And you can see here, this is one of the premier courses. It's 33 and a half hours long. It has 453 reviews. It's four and a half stars. It's one of the most highly rated courses on here. So I just wanted to say, if you guys are interested in this, I have a link in the description below with all the courses that I recommend. And if you click on it and buy one of these courses, uh, it really helped me out. Also, a couple other ones I really like, the Complete Web Development Course, Build 15 Projects, and also Projects in MongoDB. Um, so let's just take a look for a second on this full stack web development course, like what it offers. You can see here that there is the basic HTML programming, the HTML5 programming. So you can go through Twitter Bootstrap, um, app development with Meteor.js, Node.js, jQuery. So a lot of stuff, it's a lot of fundamental stuff. Postgres, MySQL, Ruby on Rails, even have a backend section. They have a SaaS section, a Git and version control, task runners, Chrome developer tools. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Like I said, it's 34 hours. And this is one of these kind of really great courses. You can just kind of taste how Eduonix does their teaching for $5 and even less if you use the coupon code ERIC20 at checkout. Yeah, so check out eduonix.com uh, in the link in the description below. I really appreciate them for sponsoring this video. Thanks. Okay, so as you can see here, my name is Eric Hanchett and I am a software developer. So let's begin here. This is no surprise to anyone that I use Visual Studio Code in all my videos. Every time I teach, I use Visual Studio Code. I really do think it's the best ID out there for web development. Not best ID overall. I really like IntelliJ for Java and some other things. I really like WebStorm. Um, but for, for most of the part, I like VS Code. It's, it's really uh, elegant and easy to use. And what makes it really powerful is it has extensions. And of course, a lot of other IDs have extensions. But the, the ones I really like about it, I use this Vim plugin. I used to use Vim for years. And in fact, I'm thinking about switching back to Vim at some point, maybe using NeoVim um, just for some side project stuff. But at work, I'm, I'm still just using uh, the Vim plugin in VS Code. I really like snippet, snippets extensions. Those are the ones where you can just type two letters and then it outputs a bunch of code for you. For example, inside my view, when I create a view app, if I wanna just create the template at the top, the script tag and the styles, I just do V base. I type V base, hit tab, and then it just auto completes and creates the whole component for me. So there's a bunch of these snippets ones. I use the one that uh, Sarah Drasner created. She's uh, an amazing view developer and she has a bunch of uh, Visual Studio Code extensions. That one's great. You may have not have heard of these. There's one called Quoco and Wallaby. It's made by the same creator. Uh, I've actually done reviews on both of these. Quoco is, it's kind of like a scratch pad that you can use inside VS Code that automatically outputs the code for you. So it's just kind of a nice way if I want to jump into a file real quickly, try something out, I'll copy and paste it into a file and it'll show the output for me. Wallaby is used for any, it can be used with Angular, Vue, any JavaScript framework, and it just, it's a really easy way to do your test. Like your tests are being run in real time. You get this gutter on the left-hand side that shows you which tests are passing, which aren't, and just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and it has a bunch of output too, and I really like it. You've probably seen my videos where I use this kind of really neon highlighted theme. So this is Synthwave 84 is a theme that I really like inside Visual Studio Code. It just makes it look a lot nicer um, it's kind of neon. A lot of people comment about it. It's getting, you know, when I used it, I don't think a lot of people had heard about it. And I swear, everywhere I go, when people mention themes, everybody mentions Synthwave 84. It's gained a lot of popularity now. TSLint, ESLint, 
uh, just, just different linting options. I usually have prettier set up as well. So that way it just all works together and I can get uh, highlighting when there's problems. I use Live Share when I'm doing pair programming. And uh, there's a bunch of specific extensions I use in VS Code for each framework I'm using. So if I'm in Vue, I might use Vidor. If I'm in Angular, there's um, some really great ones in Angular that I use too. I should do a video on this. <laughs> I think I've done a few. I should do some do some more because it keeps changing. Same thing with React. Uh, Chrome, of course, another obvious one. Uh, I've done a bunch of videos on Chrome, but I really like the Lighthouse audit tool. So if you click the audit button at the bottom, in fact, let me just show you guys. So here is GitHub. We'll talk about this in a second. But I use everything inside Chrome, except I don't use performance and I don't use memory. But I'm always in the elements, just taking a look at the elements, always looking at the styles computed, you know, checking out all the different styles on my page, the vent listeners, the whole, um, sometimes I look at accessibility, the breakpoints. And what I like, you know, especially the call that ex audits, instead of using, you can use, I believe Chrome has an extension or a plugin to do uh, the Lighthouse audit, but since it's built into the browser, it seems like it's pretty easy. Yeah, I usually choose desktop. I usually uncheck everything I don't want to, I don't care about. Like I don't create progressive web apps. So I usually uncheck that and, and some of the other things. And then I do no throttling. And then I just run it just to see how fast things are. Uh, I think this is a great tool to see like, is my website fast? Did I, is the bundle size too big? I mean, that's definitely something I'll call out. I'll jump in the console a lot of times, do console logs. Um, I'll see my console logs in here. And then I'll set up breakpoints. So of course I use the source and I'll have, I'll, I'll uh, set breakpoints inside here. I'll refresh the page to see where it breaks and then I'll output the variables. I can do a whole video on that. Oh, I'll say I, I sometimes use the application too to clear the cookies, to look at cookies. And then uh, one thing, of course I do. So one the other thing I do is if I go back to my tools I use, is I use the Redux, Vue, React, Angular, all these different plugins. Usually they'll show up here, like here's the Redux one, here's Ember, but I'll have these can pop up and I'll just use them uh, as needed. So it's a great tool. That's pretty much when you're using web development, you're gonna be in the console all the time. Firefox also has some similar features that you can use. So uh, just replace Chrome with Firefox if you're in there. I think Chrome is still a little better. So let's go back to the presentation. Windows and Mac. So I am I am a holdout that I use Mac my my Mac at work, a MacBook Pro, and then I use Windows 10 at home. So in my Windows machine, other than a lot of games, so I still do some gaming <laughs> occasionally. I have uh, Bash for Windows, so I'm I'm fully on board with the the file system, the Linux file system that you can get with Windows 10. They're actually improving it quite a bit. Uh, there's still sometimes you get some weird compatibilities. When I'm using Node and I install some package and it doesn't have, it's trying to use the operating system somehow, it sometimes breaks. For the most part, that's been fixed. I know a lot of these big maintainers of large coding projects like React and Vue, they've made it so it works fine with, with Bash for Windows. Uh, and I think it's also called the L Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. I use VS Code, of course, and I use the terminal inside VS Code. So if I don't want to open up a bash window, I'll use the terminal and that'll connect directly to the bash for windows. And then I do all the NPM installs and everything I do from there. I use NVM for my node version manager in bash, just like you would use on a Mac so I can get all made versions of node. And like I said, I, I sometimes have a few complications, but very rarely. And then I uh, use TextMate or Notepad++ to do like text editing. If I just need to quickly open up a file or, and there's a bunch of plugins for TextMate and Notepad to like for JSON formatting, things like that. A Mac, I use iTerm2. I use the built-in notes. I'm looking for a better notes app. If you know of some for Mac, there's I'm sure there's a ton of them. Leave a comment below. And maybe I'll take a look at it. And I use Homebrew, uh, but I just use a lot of command line stuff too, uh, like Git. I have a few aliases in my Bash profile, my Bash uh, RC file. Um, so I use some of that. And in fact, I've, I've changed command line, my command line uh, interfaces, my shell a few times, which we'll talk about in a moment. And I've used a bunch more. I'm probably forgetting a few things, but that's what I use on my Mac. So for both, I both use OBS. That's my recording software that 
you're seeing right now that I'm using. Adobe Suites, uh, the Adobe Suite of products like Photoshop and and Adobe Premiere and Audition. Audition I use for my podcast editing. I use Adobe Premiere to do my video editing. Adobe Photoshop to do my thumbnails, things like that. Of course, I use Chrome and Firefox on, on the Mac. I use Safari for my browsing. I usually stick with Chrome. If it works on Chrome, then I sometimes check on Firefox and Safari, but usually it works on all three. I use Browser Stack and Sauce Labs. This is more of a website, but those are used for cross-browser testing, which uh, we used to use Browser Stack and then we moved to, over to Sauce Labs. I know some people like physically have a bunch of old iPhones or Android phones that they test their websites on. I can't imagine keeping those like charged and working all the time and updated. That seems like a nightmare. Just use something like Browser Stack or Sauce Labs or just inside Chrome, use the little, the mobile view and it does pretty good simulation there. It's not perfect. Uh, if you're doing back to IE 11, Windows 10 is nice because I can get IE 11 on it and check it out to make sure everything looks okay. Terminals, uh, I used, I mentioned that in my last slide. I actually, I was using a bash terminal for a long time and then I've tried a few of them. Oh my Zish seems to be pretty good. I have the Git plugin. That's just a way you can just quickly navigate around your using the command line to get to different places. It has like auto completion and a few other nice things. I use the Git plugin religiously because I'm always like instead of writing Git checkout, I'm doing GCO and and a bunch of I did a whole video on this where it just makes it so much easier to to pull files in, change change to different branches, and then push. And then I have an alias. I, I used uh, some more Git plugins to actually push up so it's really quickly and then like I said, it creates some alias, aliases. Fonts, I use the Powerline font. I've used that with Agnoster in Oh My Zish to make my my command line look a little nicer. And then uh, I've used FireCode. FireCode, which has ligatures. I'll show you if I exit out of this. It's a open source free monospace font with programming ligatures. So you can see here, I like the look and feel of this. Uh, I think it looks really nice. You know, it's free. They have V2 as well and mono if you don't like this. And I just set this up in Visual Studio Code because I think it looks good. Uh, I know I don't want to pay for fonts. I think that's crazy. But no, it's not crazy. It's just not my style, I should say. Yeah, so this is the font I use. It's sort of a tool that I, I guess you could call it a tool font. Uh, external sites. So these tools, these are the sites that I... I often use, I, in my work, we use the Atlassian suite of products. If you don't know what those are, we use Jira. So that's where we use our, where we keep track of stories and, and kind of everything, our, our Kanban flow of, of things that move from one place to the other is all in Jira and that's uh, tickets. There's a lot of project management people use that and I use that to track what I've done. And we use Confluence, which is more of a wiki and Trello sometimes if I just want to use a personal project and I just want to get up and running real quickly, I use a Trello. I use, uh, we don't use all the Atlassian projects. I don't use Bitbucket. We use GitHub for our version control. Uh, I am often on can I use, which just checks to see if I have some browser compatibility issues. If I need to look up stuff, I'm looking stuff on MDM and Stack Overflow. Uh, sometimes W3Schools pops up. I usually try to avoid W3Schools. I know some people love it. I always think it's not that great. Some of them are good. Some are not so good. For quick mockups, I go to mockups.com, and I'm always on Slack, especially at work, to do communication. Uh, I've, we started to play around with using Figma. Uh, I'm not an expert in it, but it's a way to create mockups and and put your code in kind of a visual representation of your website. We use PSDs too in the past, and uh, a few other tools like Sketch, which I didn't mention, but that's also another one that's really popular. So thanks, that's all I have. So that was a lot of information in a short period of time, a lot of different tools. I'd love to hear what tools you guys use. Um, I'm on the Mac side, like what kind of notepad programs do you guys use? Um, what kind of, you know, one thing I'm looking for too is a good JSON formatter. So I can just copy and paste some JSON and get it all formatted nicely for me. I'm sure there's maybe some VS Code plugins that do that. I use, sometimes I just go to JSON formatter, 
website <laughs> and use it there. Sometimes I use IntelliJ to pop it in there, but I don't know, there probably is a, f a few better solutions. So leave a comment below with what tools you, you guys use. I really appreciate it. Thanks.